afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Ortho Virginia's Facebook Live event. Uh, today we'll be talking about reverse shoulder replacements. Uh, but before I do that, I want to tell you a little bit about Ortho Virginia. If you don't know about us, we are the largest provider of musculoskeletal care in Virginia. We have offices located all over the state uh, in Richmond, where I'm in practice, in Northern Virginia, in Lynchburg, in Southwest Virginia and in the Hampton Roads area. So we have docs all over the state looking to help you with your musculoskeletal needs. Um, my name is Dr. Matthew Walker. I'm a shoulder and elbow surgeon at Ortho Virginia in Richmond. Uh, my area of expertise is shoulder and elbow replacements, um, reconstruction, fractures, uh, replacements, arthroscopic surgery, and sports injuries. So we'll talk to you a little bit about one of my passions, which, which is shoulder replacements, uh, specifically reverse shoulder replacements. Um, I'll start by telling you that I see a lot of patients in my office on a weekly basis that still don't even understand that we can replace shoulders. So uh, I think the more we know about shoulder replacements and the more I can uh, teach patients about shoulder replacements, the better. Shoulder replacements are a little more complicated than hips and knees because there are two different types of shoulder replacements that we can. One of them is something called an anatomic replacement. And I have a model over here of an anatomic replacement. What an anatomic replacement is, is a replacement where we replace the ball of the shoulder and the socket of the shoulder with parts that look just like what you originally had, but they're metal and plastic. You get an anatomic replacement when the rotator cuff is in good shape and when you don't have a lot of deformities in the shoulder joint itself. This is kind of like a traditional hip or knee replacement. The parts are similar in shape, but they're made out of metal and plastic. So that's an anatomic replacement. A reverse replacement is very different. Reverse replacements look nothing like the parts that you originally have. They're shaped differently. We place the socket on the humeral side or the arm bone side, and we put the ball on the end of the shoulder blade. This is an example of a reverse shoulder replacement. The ball is on the shoulder blade now, and the socket is on the arm bone side. The deltoid muscle moves the reverse shoulder replacement. Reverse shoulder replacements are good for all those patients that need shoulder replacements that don't have good rotator cuff or have too much deformity. So when you think about having a shoulder replacement, what I worry about is how good of a shape is your rotator cuff and how much bony deformity do you have uh, on the socket. The way we assess those things are with your x-rays, with your exam in the office, and I always do CT scans. Nowadays, we use three-dimensional reconstructions on our CT scans to help us determine how much bone loss or deformity patients have and how we can best fix that with the reverse replacement. And we have a, an example of a planning program that I use, which I can show you uh, how that looks when we're planning for your reverse shoulder replacement. If we could take a look at that real fast. Okay, good. So this is a, a typical example of a three-dimensional planning software that I use before I do shoulder replacements. The image in the top left corner uh, shows a front view of the socket. The socket part of the shoulder blade. In this particular patient, he has a lot of bone loss in the top back corner which we find very typically in patients that have bad rotator cuffs and are in need of a reverse replacement. The planning programs that we use to model these images help us decide what shape of the implant we can use and where we can best put those components so we can maximize the patient's function and range of motion. The bottom right corner is the finalized plan. Uh, if you look closely at the bottom of the image, you can see there's a rounded socket, or excuse me, a rounded ball component. The back side of the socket is wider than the front side of the socket. So what we've done is we've replaced some of the bone loss from that top left corner with a metal augment to better balance the patient's shoulder. We think by using these 3D images, we can get better range of motion for our patients uh, and better outcomes, which is always the goal uh, in standard replacement. One of the questions I get often in my office is whether or not uh, an anatomic replacement is better than a reverse replacement, or is a reverse replacement better than an anatomic replacement? And the answer is that 
both of them are equally better for the right condition. Some patients who have good rotator cuffs and not a lot of deformity do excellent with anatomic replacements. Patients with bad rotator cuffs don't do well with the anatomic replacements, and that's where the reverse replacement comes in. So I tell you that we replace shoulders and we give you the implant that we think is going to give you the best function and the longest lifespan of the implant. We want to do one shoulder replacement that lasts you 20 years or more and gives you the best functional outcome that you can have. And so all the planning that we do preoperatively is aimed at reaching that goal. Um, today I brought two patients who are going to demonstrate their shoulder replacements. One patient who I've known for several years has two reverse replacements, and one patient has an anatomic replacement on one side and a reverse replacement on the other side. And we're going to just kind of show you the range of motion uh, of these patients, and maybe ask a question or two about how they felt about the recovery process and if they're happy with their implants uh, and the like. So first, if you welcome Deb, um, Deb is going to uh, demonstrate uh, her shoulders. Thank you, Deb. Uh, you're on Facebook Live, so say hi to all your fans. Uh, <laughs> Deb had two reverse shoulder replacements. Um, uh, one of them was about a year ago, and one of them was about eight months ago. And she's been pretty happy with her results. And, and I was going to ask Deb to just raise your hands up in the air and show you what kind of motion you can get. Maybe let me scoot toward mm -hmm. me. I won't bite you. I okay. promise. Yeah. Um, so she can raise her hands pretty well. And Deb, can you get the hands yeah. behind your back? Mm -hmm. And tell everybody how the recovery period was for you after these reverses. Did you have a lot of problems with the recovery? I did not have any trouble. In fact, I came into my 10-day after appointment, after surgery appointment, and asked to immediately be scheduled for the next one just four months later. So I was really pleased with the outcome, and I had put it off a lot. Time because I was really afraid that it was going to be difficult and very painful and that I might not be able to manage very well by myself. So, so Deb did really well after surgery. I, it's funny, I just asked her, I said, Deb, why did we do these replacements four months apart? I mean, that's kind of short. And what'd you tell me? I said, I just couldn't wait to get the next one done and get and I was in so much pain for so many years. Um, I'd even had a break in one of the shoulders. I had arthroscopic surgery in one of them. And um, once we got the first one done and it went so well, I just couldn't couldn't get signed up fast enough for the second. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Deb did great. And, and we did reverses on her because of a bad rotator cuff and bad deformity. And she's got very near normal motion. It's hard for anybody to tell that she's had a replacement, much less a reverse. So. And without the pain. Without the pain, yeah. which is the most important thing. That's the, the main goal of, of our ambedi arthroplasty surgery is pain relief. Uh, so from shoulders to hips, knees, elbow replacement, we want patients to be pain-free. That's our number one goal. If we can get them to have great motion, too, then that's, uh, that's the icing on the cake, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Deb. Uh, Next, we have Warren. Uh, Warren, I know, I've known Warren for geez, 11 years now, uh, and he's had bad shoulders ever since uh, we met. Now, Warren had an anatomic replacement. Say hi to everybody, Warren, all your fans on Facebook Live. Um, he had an anatomic uh, total shoulder in August of 21, and he had a reverse shoulder replacement in August of 22 on his right side. So he's a year out and two months from one side, and he is two months out from his reverse replacement. And uh, Warren, if you don't mind showing how your motion is, raise them up in the air, uh, hands behind the back, and, and maybe if you could even stand up, rotate the arms out to the side, and maybe scoot toward me. That's great. That looks awesome. Thank you. Have them behind the back. Can you go behind the back with those things? Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> so, so Warren's interesting. So he had he had very bad arthritic wear and tear on the left shoulder, but his rotator cuff looked good, and he didn't have any major socket for me. So he did great with the anatomic replacement. Uh, the right shoulder socket was very worn out in the back top corner, and he had a lot of what we call medialization. So he worn up so much bone that the joint line had moved towards his midline that way. Uh, so we did the reverse on his right side. And Warren, what do you think? Was there one surgery which was easier to recovery from or what do you think it was about the same yeah i actually thought both were pretty easy to recover range of motion was harder to um get to the full range on the anatomic 
which surprised me compared to the reverse, which very quickly had a uh, good range of motion and I'm working on straight strength training now. Okay, so he, very early from his reverse of playing, he's already got great motion. Uh, and what we see a lot of times, his patients tend to bounce back much quicker after the reverse replacement than the hand replacement uh, for various reasons. One of those reasons, because a lot of times patients don't have the rotator cuff that we need to protect or repair at the end of those surgeries. So uh, so you can get great motion uh, like Devin Warren, um, despite having a reverse replacement. Um, so that's one thing that I, I get a lot in the office. People are worried about range of motion and reverses. And in general, it's much better than what you start with. Uh, and the pain relief is is really the real reason why we do it. So, so thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you very much Absolutely. for coming. <laughs> So, so again, you know, when it comes to shoulder replacements, uh, there are two types we can use, an anatomic replacement and a reverse replacement. Both of them are used primarily for pain relief uh, and secondarily to get you better motion and function out of a shoulder. Uh, an anatomic replacement is good for people with good rotator cuffs and not too much deformity. A reverse replacement is great for everybody else. We use reverse replacements nowadays for uh, bad rotator cuffs, bad uh, deformities, for fixing complicated fractures that we're unable to put back together, for dealing with bone loss, uh, that can be as a uh, consequence of infections or prior surgeries, um, or even tumor uh, reconstruction. Um, so the reverse gives us a little more variability than the anatomic replacement. We can deal with a lot more pathology with that uh, injury. When I started doing uh, shoulder replacements, I've been in practice for 12 years now. About 75% of the replacements that we did in America were anatomic replacements. Nowadays, 75% of our replacements we do are reverse replacements. Um, they have a great track record. Uh, they have a, a lifespan that's probably longer than anatomic replacements now. Uh, and again, we can treat several different pathologies now. So. So that's what I wanted to tell you about reverse replacements. Um, I'm going to open it up to questions uh, from the audience. Uh, and I'm here to answer anything uh, that you have. Thank you so much, Dr. Walker. So our first question is, can either type of shoulder replacement be done outpatient? Yes, that's a great question. Uh, we are moving a lot of our shoulder replacements to outpatient centers for various reasons. Uh, one is that we've learned that we can do these safely and effectively in our surgery centers. Uh, we can avoid a lengthy hospital stay or an overnight hospital stay. Uh, and we have excellent outcomes uh, with these replacements as an outpatient. We do outpatient surgery all the time. And besides replacements, uh, the most uh, common outpatient surgery I do is a rotator cuff surgery. In general, people's pain after a rotator cuff is actually a little worse than it is after uh, shoulder replacement surgeries. So that's one of the reasons we started doing them outpatiently because they don't have a whole heck of a lot of pain. Rotator cuff patients tend to have a little bit more pain, even though that's an arthroscopic surgery for most people nowadays. So we are moving most of our uh, shoulder replacements uh, towards the outpatient setting. And I think as time goes by, we'll see more and more of those shifted to outpatient surgery. Are there any activities that patients can't do once they're recovered from their shoulder replacement? That's a great question. We do push you on some restrictions uh, for the shoulder replacements. For a reverse replacement, I usually limit overhead lifting to about 20 pounds. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's no scientific data that says you can do more or less than 20 pounds. But to me, that seems like a level that's safe. We want these replacements to last as long as possible. And the more wear and tear and the more load you put across the joint, the more likely they are to wear out the polyethylene plastic that's between the two metal components. The anatomic replacements, I'm a little bit more lenient about what you can do uh, because the rotator cuff uh, in, theory, in theory is intact in those patients. So you tend to have a little bit more strength and stability. But I have patients with reverse replacements and anatomic replacements that do heavy work like lineman work where they're climbing out telephone poles and, and working on uh, heavy wires. I have several... Uh, uh, welders that do uh, heavy lifting with uh, metal parts that they have to weld together. Uh, and as long as the weight that you're carrying is below shoulder level, I don't have any restrictions on those. Really. You can do that weight lifting in the gym, you can go back to tennis, you can row uh, uh, in kayak and uh, things of that nature. Uh, I don't recommend heavy weight, weight training. 
Um, although I was just at the American Shoulder and Elbow meeting uh, over the weekend, and some of those patients, uh, some of the surgeons are letting uh, patients go back to heavy weightlifting, which I was a little surprised to hear. But uh, I think you, you get your shoulder replacement for pain relief and better motion, and you only want one in your lifetime if you can have it. So protect it if you can. Thank you. How many reverse shoulder replacements have you performed? Well, I perform well over a thousand uh, reverse replacements. So I do a lot of these surgeries. Are there any preparations that patients need to do before surgery, such as getting strength exercises, weighting law, uh, weight loss, uh, anything to do with blood thinners, anything like that? There, there are several things to prepare for before surgeries. Um, uh, we'll start with the blood thinners. Uh, we usually recommend uh, holding your blood thinners for a period of time before these operations, and different blood thinners require a different period of time to hold them for. So we get the advice of the cardiologists and the primary care docs in terms of how long we should hold those things for. Um, I always have been a big believer in what we call prehab or prehabilitation. That you do therapy beforehand to strengthen the muscles that you have so that your outcome and your recovery is quicker and easier. So I think uh, pre-rehab uh, before a replacement is a reasonable thing to do. Uh, weight loss is always a good thing if you're, if you're carrying extra weight. We do have weight restrictions for some of our arthroplasty procedures, and the weight restrictions is based on what's called the body mass index. The body mass index is a ratio of your height your weight and, and and the cutoff we have is a bmi of 40. so if your bmi is 40 or higher we recommend weight loss prior to any arthroplasty procedure whether it's a shoulder a hip or what is the recovery time after a shoulder replacement that's a great question uh when it comes to an anatomic replacement and, and a reverse replacement i think the recovery times can be quite different but i'll tell you that different surgeons have different rehab protocols what I do with my anatomic replacements is I keep you in a sling for four weeks. The reason I do that is after surgery or during surgery, I have to move what's called the subscapularis or the front rotator cuff muscle, and I repair that at the end of the operation. I want that subscapularis to heal perfectly because that's an important muscle for stability of the shoulder. So because of that, I keep you in a sling for four weeks afterwards. With the reverse replacement, the recovery can be a bit quicker. Most of those patients don't have a great rotator cuff, so I'm not repairing the subscapularis. What I've moved to with the reverse replacement is you're in a sling for a week and a half, and then you start physical therapy. In general, I'd say with a reverse replacement and about two months, you can start using the arm as a for most of the things that you want to do. But in general, I always tell patients recovery from the replacement is set in phases. And the first phase is sling use, and maybe a week and a half for a reverse versus four weeks for an anatomic. The second phase is physical therapy, which in general lasts about six to eight weeks. And the third phase is the rest of the year getting your strength back to as good as it can be. I like to tell my patients recovery for these replacements is 10% per month. So even though your pain relief and your motion might improve quickly, I think you get it better and better for up to a year. So if you, if you look at Warren, Warren had his reverse replacement two months ago, and he's got equal motion to what he had uh, his anatomic replacement over a year ago. What are the risks of a reverse shoulder replacement? Sure. The, the risk of any surgery uh, in general or infection for a shoulder replacement, the reported risk of infection is about 1 in 250. So it's not that frequent. Reverse shoulder replacements have a higher risk of instability, meaning dislocations, uh, than an anatomic replacement. But with modern implants and modern techniques, uh, we've learned to really decrease that risk. So it's it's unusual to have a dislocating reverse replacement uh, these days. Um, we always tell patients there's potential damage to nerves and blood vessels. Uh, some of those are usually stretch injuries, which means that if the shoulder is uh, very tight or scarred. Sometimes getting access to the socket or the glenoid takes a little more work, and there's a potential for nerve stretch injuries, but those are all very, very low. If someone has arthritis in their shoulder, should they get an anatomic replacement or a reverse replacement? That's a great question. I get that question every day in my office. And what I want to give you is the replacement that is best for you. 
Um, either an anatomic replacement or a reverse replacement is better in general, but for an individual patient, one might be better than the other. So if you have an arthritic shoulder and your rotator cuff is in good shape and the socket doesn't have too much deformity, I think an anatomic replacement is a better option for you. If your rotator cuff is in bad shape or it's torn, or you have bad deformity in the shoulder, then an anatomic replacement won't last you very long and the reverse replacement is what you need next. Um, some doctors are doing reverse replacements for patients who are a certain age. Uh, so if you're older than a certain number, we'll say 75, then maybe a reverse replacement is the, is the better shoulder because you don't have to worry about the things that wear out in an anatomic replacement. The things that wear out in an anatomic replacement are number one, the rotator cuff, and number two, the socket component. With the reverse replacement, we don't have problems with either of those things because the rotator cuff is not necessary for a reverse replacement. And the socket failure rate, which is the connection of the sphere to the bone, is down to less than half a percent. So the so socket failure rate and reverse replacements is very unlikely. Do patients who are recovering from a replacement do physical therapy? We usually do physical therapy for all of our patients. I think it's important to help strengthen the muscles around the shoulder and to maximize your range of motion. So I always tell patients, I think between surgery and therapy, it might be a 60-40 relationship. I think 60% of, of the outcome is going to be based on, you know, how well the surgery is performed. And 40% is going to be based on how much work you're doing to get your motion back and forth, how much therapy you're doing. Someone says that they have osteonecrisis in their shoulder. How will that affect shoulder replacement surgery? Well, osteonecrosis means that for some reason, the blood has been interrupted usually to the humeral head, to the ball part of the shoulder. So if you look at the model, this is a replacement model. In patients with osteonecrosis, the ball tends to die and the bone collapses. The ball becomes very flat. Now, there's lots of reasons for osteonecrosis, um, and based on the pathology or the etiology of the osteonecrosis, that can depend on what we do in terms of replacement. Most patients that have osteonecrosis in the ball have a fairly normal socket in the shoulder, and a lot of those patients tend to be younger. So those patients a lot of times can get by with a partial replacement where we replace only the ball part of the shoulder. In fact, nowadays, uh, partial replacements or hemiarthroplasties. I usually only perform that surgery for young patients with osteonecrosis or for very specific shoulder fractures that I can get perfectly aligned with the partial replacement. Um, sometimes osteonecrosis patients have a tighter shoulder capsule, so it requires more work to loosen those patients up, uh, but they do very well with partial or in some cases total shoulder replacement. Thank you. How soon can someone drive after a shoulder replacement? I tell patients not to drive while the sling is on. So if your sling isn't going to be on in place for four weeks, uh, that's a good time to start driving once the sling is off. Uh, there's some data from New York, uh, that from uh, NYU, uh, where they put patients through a driving simulator after shoulder replacements. And what they found was four weeks, they had equally good or bad driving as they had uh, <laughs> before their replacement. <laughs> so four weeks is probably a good uh, estimate. Thank you. Which hospitals do you work out of? I do most of my shoulder replacements at Henrico Parham Hospital on Parham Road in Broad Street. It's in the West End of Richmond. I do some outpatient surgeries at the Boulders, which is over on the south side, close to Chippenham Hospital. And I do some outpatients at Brimo Road, which is by our St. Mary's uh, office location. Somebody says that they had a successful rotator cuff surgery five years ago, but they recently fell on that shoulder and it's causing some pain and the shoulder pop. Do you think that they will need to do a reverse replacement in that case, or is there something else going on? Well, I, I think the, the first thing I worry about with somebody who had a rotator cuff repair that had a new injury is did the rotator cuff re-tear? And the reason it's a worry is because rotator cuffs thin out over time like your socks do. So when I get a new pair of socks, they're nice and thick. Uh, as I wear the socks over and over, I get some thinning out in the heel and the big toe. And eventually those socks have a hole in it. The rotator cuff is very similar. It thins out over time. 
and eventually it gets a hole that might be symptomatic. If you have a rotator cuff tear that's causing you symptoms and you get it fixed, we're repairing a tendon that's not perfect. So I always worry about retooling the rotator cuffs uh, after a fall or an injury uh, on a previously repaired cuff. If someone is getting a hip replacement, how soon after that can they have a shoulder replacement? So I think I think in general, three months is a good rule of thumb uh, to wait between a shoulder and a hip replacement. You want the hip replacement to, to go well. You want it to be smooth. You want to make sure you're walking without any assistive devices, no, uh, no crutches, no canes, uh, no walkers, uh, so that you can rehab uh, your shoulder appropriately and not overdo it. So I think three months minimum. Thank you. Is throwing possible after a shoulder replacement? I think throwing is possible within certain ranges. You're not going to be Nolan Ryan. You're not going to be pitching for the Yankees. Uh, but you can uh, certainly throw a ball, throw a baseball, throw a football uh, with, uh, with shoulder replacements. Most of my patients are golfers or tennis players, and they do well after shoulder replacements and reverse shoulder replacements for those sports. What causes scapular fractures after a reverse shoulder replacement? That's a fantastic question. So scapular fractures are something that we don't fully understand after reverse shoulder replacements. Well, the most common scapular fracture is what we call a scapular spine fracture. So the scapular spine is this area in the back top corner of the shoulder blade. When we do a reverse replacement, a lot of times we stretch the arm a little bit longer by about a centimeter than the other arm. And the deltoid muscle is what powers the reverse replacement to raise the arm. We think that the deltoid muscle moving the arm by itself causes some stress along this posterior lateral corner of what's called the acromion or the scapular spine. So the most common scapular fractures we think are stress reactions or stress fractures after reverse replacements. And we think they're due to the over pull of the deltoid or more force on the acromion uh, from the deltoid. They can also be caused by injuries such as falls. If someone is not doing an outpatient procedure, how long is their hospital stay? In general, it's a one night overnight stay in the hospital. Are there any age restrictions on shoulder replacements, upper or lower? I, I think age restrictions uh, are not as important as what we call the physiologic age of the patient. So I think that the age of a num as a number is not as important as what's your overall health status. So, so the oldest patient I've ever operated on for a reverse shoulder replacement was 96 years old. So I'll tell you, he was 94. I did one side. He did great for a year. And then I, I didn't see him anymore. I just kind of thought maybe maybe he maybe he left uh, the earth. <laughs> um, he came back at 96 and said, Walker, I'm ready for the other side. I said, oh, goodness me, you did so well with the other side. We can do it. Um, and then the youngest patient I ever did was was 29. He got an anatomic replacement. He had several prior surgeries and bad arthritis, and he was miserable. So I, in general, we don't like to do shoulder replacements on 29-year-olds, and, and there's not a heck of a lot of 90 or 96-year-old patients that get shoulder replacements. But uh, I think the age uh, number uh, is one thing, but the physiologic age and the overall health status is much more important. All right. Thank you so much. That is all the time we have for today. Dr. Walker, would you like to close? Well, uh, thank you for uh, joining us for a Facebook Live event. Hopefully you learned something about shoulder replacements and specifically reverse shoulder replacements. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Ortho Virginia, to your uh, physicians in your area that perform these replacements, uh, or me and my staff for any follow-up questions. We're always happy to help. Uh, Ortho Virginia is here for you. Uh, our whole job is to help our patients uh, feel better, move better and get back to the things that we want to do. Uh, and we're happy to do that as, as frequently and, and as often as we can. So thank you and uh, have a great rest of your day.